This is Jackie, and I'm here with Chase Atlantic. We are on my very last stop at Warp Tour. You guys are coming up on the very end. More importantly, coming up on a day off. What keeps you going on these, like, no, you don't even have a day off? We no day no, off. No, 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 no. We're going straight to Chicago for Lord Palooza. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, you guys are kind of like festival experts, I feel, at this point, between Bonnaroo and Firefly. I feel like, yeah, I feel like this festival has made us festival yeah. experts. We, yeah. we started festivals um, m two months ago. And we've probably done a million since then. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you've Close you've enough. played all the really big ones this year, and you're about to play all. I feel like that checks off like every yeah, festival. Like pretty line. much, we just have to do um, Coachella, Coachella and, and Tomorrowland, Burning Man. Okay. Yeah. Three. So, so you have goals for next year. That yeah. that's fine. How do you go about choosing your set list for a festival like Warp Tour versus Lollapalooza? Is it different or is well, it the same? Warp Tour is 25 minutes. It's short, so yeah. fast. It's short and it's. A lot heavier. We go a lot harder with the sets. Yeah, you have to kind of gauge the situation, the environment that you're in, and then you can kind of select what you think will work. Like we had a few different songs at the beginning of the tour, and we kind of switched it up and found out what works the best. Target audience. I mean, if people are going to Warp Tour, they obviously want more fast-paced, heavier stuff. Whereas if you're playing later at a festival, you can have more relaxed songs. Yeah. Kind of have a little. If you have more time, you can kind of get, bring them through the emotions. Yeah, through emotions. This is just like 25 minutes. Like here's. Everything good we so got. So just hit them with it. Yeah. Hit them with it. Fast. Hit them with it. I was gonna say, as I've I've seen your lives that you do, you just pack it on. Yeah. You know, tons of energy. How has Warp Tour prepared you for Lollapalooza and the rest of the year? It's just done nothing I, I, good. Warp Tour is like so hands on. It, we are we're loading out the trucks at 7 a.m. every morning. We're putting out our own posters. We're hustling. It's in the heat. I don't think it can get much hotter than this. <laughs> um, there's no stage production. We've learned, to, we've learned to have to be entertaining for once on stage. Yeah, no, no lights. Check. No lights. <laughs> no sound check. It's yeah. all, you have 15 minute changeovers instead of 45 to So I feel like this tour has prepared us for anything that life throws at us. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing the worst of the, the hard work now. So everything should be easier from yeah. here on. That's the goal, right? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, we're doing something wrong. <laughs> I think it'll be easier. You guys recently released Tidal Wave. How is that an evolution from Metal About? Oh, I mean, it's a fair bit of evolution. Same song. <laughs> song. We just copied the, the formula. No, so it's been, it's been a few years it's been between the two songs. So um, we kind of just, we had like a little new wave of ideas coming in. It's funny that I say wave, Tidal Wave. <laughs> coming in like uh, at the very beginning of this year. And we kind of just sat in the studio. We had like a week off or something and we came up with a few songs and Tidal Wave were one of those songs and we thought it would be a good song to kind of introduce the fans to while like kind of transitioning because we're always working on our sound consistently so we kind of want to transition but give them something that was still Chase atlantic -y, but a little bit new school you know what I mean? It was, um, it was something that we could only release too at the time because of business uh, ventures. And it was just something for the fans that they, they knew about us and I felt like it was very Chase Atlantic. Music singles are important, but so are just, like, what's your favorite song in the album that you might not release as a single, but it's kind of your personal favorite? I mean, we're probably not going to release any of the songs from the album as a single. We've really, we're, like, constantly working on new music. Um, we have a studio in our bus, so we've made a few new songs on this tour even, when we found the time, which is pretty difficult. But, um, yeah, we're constantly just making music. That's like a good sneaky way to get maybe an insight on a new song. The, new, uh, yeah, the, the new Nothing? Album. The, no, the, the potential new album. <laughs> are, the, are you doing <laughs> all of them? Yeah, we work on a lot of music, so we're not gonna. We probably won't revisit old stuff. Like we're just gonna release the new shit. Yeah. Well, speaking of releasing new music, what role does mu do music streaming sites like Spotify have when you're thinking about putting out new music, especially if you're not going to put it out as an entire album? I they, mean, when, they it, own us. when it comes to the songwriting aspect, that doesn't. I don't really believe that Spotify or any of that goes into it. But uh, certainly afterwards, I yeah. mean, the impact that these streaming social medias have had to, especially us, you know, it's like... It's the most important thing in our important careers. Thing. Like, we definitely, when we're making music, we just make whatever we want to make. And then we kind of curate what we think is the best of, of those creations. Yeah. And then we'll, once we release it, like, we'll just gauge the audiences what their favorite... Because it, it always changes. Like, when you first release an album, the most popular song will be different to what the most popular song is now. Yeah. So it's always Definitely. always evolving, changing. So you just kind of judge based off what it, how it's doing at the time. I think if you go into it as well, trying to focus on specific markets yeah. like a Spotify market, it just won't be organic. Yeah. So you just have to be no point. easy with it. I feel like one good thing about Spotify, which is, could also be a bad thing, but good for reading analytics, is Spotify has pretty fast turnaround play counts. You can't see play counts on, on the Apple side of things. 
And I'm not dissing Apple. I'm, I'm a massive fan of Apple Music. Yeah. I have my subscription. Uh, yeah. But uh, I like being able to see how our music is doing yeah. and how other people can see how it's doing as well. Yeah. If it's going well. If it's going bad, I don't want them to see it. <laughs> is there a way that you can see a correlation between music streams and ticket sales? Um, it's, it's, it's closely related, but it's also, very, it's also very different. Like, a lot of people that are digesting music don't necessarily go to a lot of festivals. And so I feel like the, the audiences that we're seeing at festivals are like a whole different side of the audiences that are listening to our music. Yeah. Because like you meet these people and you see them consistently over and over again, and then the people that are on the, on the internet like they don't see in real life, they're still like, it's like two different worlds, you know what I mean? But they all kind of meet in the middle at some point. And so you've got you're finishing up Warped Tour, Lollapalooza, and then I think you have a European tour coming up. Yes, yes, correct. And mm. a couple of European festivals. Yes, yes. Yeah. We're doing that first UK appearance. Park will park. Okay, so lots of festivals, perhaps new music in the future. Stay tuned for much more from Chase Atlantic. This is Jackie. Thanks to Chorus FM and in the key of change. Thank you, Jackie.